Hi everyone, my name is Garmin and this is the New Leaf Podcast and today I have a special video because I want to talk about the year of using what I have which is my theme for this year and it is the 30th or is it the 29th? It's, it's the 30th of June which means I've reached the halfway point of my year of using what I have and uh, I, I want to give you guys an update. So. The essence of this year for me is to use as much as I can of the things that I have. So uh, and by that I mean the yarn and fabric that I already have, um, the garments or other things that I have already made, um, see if I can customize them in any way to, uh, so that I can use them, um, and to buy as little new stuff as possible um and yes it has very much been a challenge uh but a really fun one and i'm going to give you some updates if you want to watch my year of using what i have videos and the tutorial videos and the tips and tricks videos that come with it then you're very welcome to check out my patreon page where you can find all of these exclusive uh, tutorial videos and you know you pay a small subscription fee uh, but you get a ton of content because um, this is just the theme for this year there's already so many knitting masterclasses and tutorials on there so you will not be bored <laughs> so go check it out if that sounds like something you would like there's a seven day free trial so you can check it out at um no charge uh for seven days so first up in january i got rid of a lot of stuff i'm one of those people that likes to hold on to things uh because i might use them someday um and I was always asking myself that question, will I ever use this? And, you know, the answer was like, probably yes. But I changed it to the question, can somebody else make better use of this right now than I am? Or will somebody else be happier with this than I am? Uh, and in that case, the answer was almost always yes. So I got rid of a lot of stuff. I um, I brought a lot of stuff to the thrift store, um, like bags of yarn, <laughs> huge bags of yarn. So that immediately lifted a weight off of my shoulders. But then uh, I also uh, instantly got to work on some big projects. Um, and most of these projects were um, like the key to, to most of the projects that I've been doing this year is to just do it. Um, and for most of my knitting and crocheting years, I've been, uh, thinking, okay, what is the best possible pattern that I could knit or crochet with this yarn? And I was I was overthinking everything. I mean, that's basically the theme of my life, overthinking everything. But um, I was thinking, oh, you know, this pattern is too simple for this yarn. This 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 yarn needs a little bit more, um, you know, a pattern with more pizzazz. So I was basically saving yarns for more difficult patterns or you know oh once i learn how to do that i can do this or oh, once i have time for this i can do that but um and the key to most of the projects was no just just use it just use it and um that brings me to my first um project that i finished which is this lopey rug so I had a bunch of loopy yarns and I used most of them, I, I used most of them up uh, in the in the first half of this year, which was really, really fun. Uh, so I had bought all of them to create beautiful uh, punch needle tapestries and whatever. Um, and I had all of the materials, uh, but I, I was just overthinking it. And um, then I just thought, okay, I'm just going to start this project. I'm going to make a rug. I'm just going to make rectangles. And it got done. <laughs> um, you know, 
I say done, but it's like, you know, it's being used. So that equals done in my book. So it's backed with uh, fabric. Uh, I have a full um, video of how I made this on my Patreon page. So this was project number one. I think I used up about 600 grams with that. And then I still had a bunch left, so I thought, okay, crochet uses up yarn very quickly too, so I'll make a crochet rug. Um, and this used up, I think, 600 grams as well. Um, so that's already quite a lot. Um, the pattern tutorial is up on my Patreon page if you want to have a look. Um, it was just really, really fun. This is now a rug that goes underneath my Monstera plant. Um, and it's really handy because, you know, if you care well for your plants, they will start to, like, cry. <laughs> they will have little, uh, you know, water droplets uh, coming off of their leaves and this just catches them before it can ruin my floor. So this was big project number two. Uh, I just had a lot of fun making this. This was super quick and just another one of those things where, you know, oh, I, I could have used this yarn in such a more beautiful way or whatever, but in the end it gave me so much more satisfaction to just get it done. Um, and then my third project is probably the ugliest thing I've ever made. <laughs> it is a pot holder, uh, which is also crocheted with Lopi yarn, and again, I have the, the video of how I made this on my Patreon page. Um, and I, I thought, you know, I want to try felting it. I want to see what that's like. Um, so that was fun to do. Plus, I could use up so many scraps. And right now, I still have a couple balls left of the Lope yarn. I'll probably make another one of these. Um, but yes, that made a huge dent in my yarn stash um, already. And... Um, yeah, it just made me feel really good. So that was all of the Lopi yarn projects. Another project that I have uh, is a blanket, which I have now finished. And um, I used up 20... 20.5 20 balls. Okay, so let's say 21, because... Yeah, I, I, a half a ball is still using a, a ball. I think I... No, whatever, whatever. <laughs> 20 and a half. Uh, so that is 1,020 grams um, of self-striping sock yarn. This is Scapey's Downtown. I had this idea for a blanket. And I thought, I'm never going to knit this because it will take too long. Um, and then I uh, followed a course on machine knitting. And then I thought, oh... I think I can actually do this. So, I did. <laughs> it's huge! <laughs> so yeah, um, I knit all of the strips on the machine, then I sewed them all together by hand, and I made a large I-cord, which I also didn't do by hand. Um, so. Don't worry, I'm not insane, uh, but but I did uh, uh, sew it, hand sew it to the edge of the blanket, so maybe I'm a little bit insane. But um, this was just... Ugh. Machine knitting is so much fun, and, you know, a thousand twenty grams of yarn that's a win. That's a huge win. So that's another huge pile of yarn that I was able to use up. Do you want to see it all spread out? Let's, let's, let's show you. My neighbor is outside, so he'll probably be like, what is this? Here's the blanket. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sit down. I don't dare to look outside. <laughs> so yes. Oh, I just, don't you 
don't you just love it? Oh. Yeah, so super happy with this. Um, and for two reasons. I have a beautiful blanket and I have a lot of yarn out of my stash. So that was really, really fun. Another really big project <laughs> that I started and finished this year was the Minori sweater, which some of you will have uh, seen me knitting on the uh, live streams. I, um, I stream on Thursday mornings. Um, and yeah, we had a garment along and I was knitting on this jumper. Um, it's, it's huge. It's heavy. Um, I cannot wear it right now, but I will be so happy when the temperatures drop. Um, so, I have weighed this, uh, this sweater as well. Um, the yarn for this, it was another case of, you know, I'll show you what I have left. It was another case of, okay, I'll buy this yarn because it's on sale, um, and then I think I had it for five years. So, yeah. Another um, example of my just do it projects because I was thinking, oh, you know, what, what if, um, what if I do this and it doesn't work out and blah, blah, blah. You know, I just needed to <laughs> stop overthinking and just do it. So the Minori sweater, um, yeah, used up basically all of the yarn. So I have this much left which I'll find a use for. It's fine, but it's it's not an overwhelming amount anymore. I used up a thousand one hundred forty two grams of yarn. <laughs> and they were two hundred gram hanks, right? I think I had six six times two yes, yeah, so I had a thousand two hundred grams or maybe I had seven hanks. Anyway, I used up almost 1200 grams of yarn so that that's huge that's huge um so very very happy with that oh the back the back is just this lovely texture oops uh the sleeves i did not do them according to pattern um i i made them way simpler they do have the the cables from the pattern but the rest I just used the uh, texture from the back panel which I really liked who needs bobbles on sleeves anyway so um, so yeah uh, those are just a couple of really really big projects um, that I have finished throughout these six months that you know not only are they fun to do um, and take yarn out of my stash but they also motivate me to keep going and um, that's just really really nice um another thing so i have another whip here or finished object that i want to show you but another thing that has really helped me is to note down all of my works in progress in my notebook right here um i think i showed you this page in a different video. It's probably called All of My Whips or something. Um, yeah, and I, I made it fun for myself with washi tape and stickers and stuff. Uh, that was last year. So let's go to the start of this year, 2023. So in January, I had 23 works in progress, but I had 21 at the end of the month. Um, and I would just write down all of the works in progress and then I have a little progress bar that I would color in. Um, yeah, I can, I can show you this part of close. So I would have a little progress bar, you see, and I would color in how many percent of the, uh, of the pattern is done. <laughs> uh, in March, I had a peak of 29 whips. That has been my biggest number this year. Um, and right now, I'm down to 19. So, 
that feels good to be under 20 whips. Um, and just writing all of those works in progress, and I mean all of those. Most of these have been hibernating for years. Um, but just having to write them out month after month with the progress bar, um, that motivates me. I don't know if it motivates everyone, but it motivates me. Um, and in March, I finished this lovely cardigan, which you've probably seen as well. And this has been a work in progress for at least a year. Uh, so that felt really, really good to get that done. So, um, so yeah, I'm just sharing all of the things that motivate me so that hopefully uh, you might also think, oh, I'm gonna try that. Um, yeah, so I had 29 works in progress. Uh, I did also frog a couple things. Uh, I, had a, I had a lot of pairs of socks or, you know, sock projects that had one finished sock and then the other one uh, was just like three rounds or something or not cast on at all. Um, I took a couple of those hibernating whips with me on holiday. Uh, that's always a great motivator. You know, if, if you go somewhere and you can only bring so much um, and you don't have access to your new and shiny works in progress, that's a great uh, opportunity to get some older hibernating whips uh, done. Just make sure that when you pack them, that you, you know, pack the pattern as well, or you know where you are, uh, or uh, you have the correct needle size. Because sometimes with hibernating whips, uh, if they're, for example, if they're on interchangeable needles, I'll screw off the, um, the tips because inevitably I will need it for something else. And, and yeah, just make sure they have their needle tips or make sure you have your crochet hook in there. Nothing worse than taking a crochet whip and forgetting the crochet hook, right? So, um, and we're in June right now. I have 19 whips, so that was really, really nice. Um, yeah, I just finished that big stripy bl blanket this month because I still have to do the border. I also just finished the, the big cable sweater this month. So, yeah, this is just felt really really good. So aside from knitting or crocheting projects, what have I, what have I been doing? Um, I've also been looking at my yarns uh, because of course I got rid of a lot of yarns but other yarns um, I didn't want to get rid of but I could also not use them in their current state. And what I did with one of them was spin it into a thinner yarn. So you might have seen or heard me talking about this as well. This, uh, these were Wool and the Gang, um, what's it called? Crazy Sexy Wool, I think. Really chunky yarn. I've knit a cardigan with that, never wearing that cardigan. I think I've worn it three times, which is an abomination. I mean, that's probably not the right word, but it's like I've put so much time into that cardigan and I'm only wearing it, I've only worn it three times? No. Immediate no. So, so, and I still had some yarn left, so I still have to deal with that cardigan. But I still had some yarn left, a lot of yarn. Um, I think I had five skeins of 200 grams so I had a thousand grams uh, and now I have uh, these are these are only two I have four skeins in total of this beautiful DK weight tightly spun yarn uh, that I then over dyed as well uh, so I can now make a beautiful sweater with it that I will actually want to wear and in the same way that you can transform your yarn, you can also transform garments or other projects that you have already made. So this was a cardigan 
that I had knit seven years ago and the sleeves were getting too tight um, and I had I still had yarn left over so I'm re-knitting the sleeves so this sleeve is already done and I'm re-knitting this sleeve right now and I, I know you can see the color difference but I'm planning to over dye it afterwards uh, to really revamp it and um, make it more fun and to extend its life and that is just so fun to me that I can you know customize things that I've already made instead of creating new things uh, piling onto the things that I make um, and so did I not buy any yarn this year? I, I did buy some yarn, but I believe I only bought these. So I have these skeins that I bought and I have a couple skeins of this, which I, uh, I got as a gift from We Are Knitters. Um, and I'm already knitting, right? So it's not sitting in my closet. This is sitting in my closet, uh, again, because I want to have the perfect idea for it. But I might learn from my past mistakes. So, but, but the idea is that I did buy these yarns knowing, um, uh, I mean, I did buy these yarns after I had already got, gotten rid of a lot of yarns and I saw a lot of similarities in the yarns that I got rid of. Um, uh, for example, the colors, I knew that cool colors don't really work well with me um, and that while I love buying and working with the brightest, beautiful uh most beautiful color mixes and you know ombre and and speckles and whatever um i tend to wear the ones with less color so this then kind of makes sense and this is also a color that i would love to wear so i'm trying to be more conscious about the things that i do buy um and for example, the summer top that I'm knitting right now, I did a lot of research on uh, which summer tops, you know, are, are nice to wear. Um, so I watched some videos about, uh, uh, from knitters who had made summer tops and did like a review after a couple of years, like, do I wear them or not? And I found that really, really helpful. So I went with a DK or maybe it's sport, I don't know. Um, in any case, I came to the conclusion that I should not use uh, heavier than DK weight for summer tops. And I'm using bamboo instead of like wool, so, so I can wear it in summer. So I really learned a lot about my buying habits, but also about, you know, what, what I actually like to use. Uh, and that has just been really valuable for me. Yeah, and that brings me to the last point. So I've kind of applied the same concept about, you know, using what I have. I've kind of applied that to my designing life as well. So if you're a designer, um, I'm sure you will be familiar with the dozens of patterns in, in the pipeline, you know, at some stage of completion, um, but, but not really complete enough, you know, um, and you just have a lot of patterns that you're working on, um, but the new shiny idea is always more fun than the patterns that you're already working on. So this year I kind of made it a point to to work on the older patterns that I have of which one I just published this week the soft rose blanket I can't fully show you because Momo is laying on top of it uh, but I've been just releasing some older patterns I mean to you they're still they're new patterns but to me they've been in my in my mind for maybe two years. I think this was from 2020. So 
yeah, um, I've kind of applied the same concept there to, to publish the patterns that I've already put a lot of work into instead of just forcing myself to come out with new ideas. Um, and that has been really nice as well. Um, it kind of feels like decluttering my brain. Uh, so yeah, that, that just feels really good. So last thing, what am I going to do for the next half of this year? So obviously I want to kind of continue in the way that I'm doing now. I want to um, not buy new yarn. <laughs> I don't want to buy new fabrics. Um, oh, I forgot to show you one thing. I also sewed this dress that I'm insanely proud of uh, and this uh, I used fabric that has also been in my stash for maybe two years um, yeah and I just sewed this really fun dress for myself that I've been wearing a ton and has the buttons and yeah this could totally be something that I would have bought in a store, but now I can make it myself. Um, and I do still have a couple of nice fabrics, so I might make a couple tops, uh, you know, modified from this dress pattern. Um, this is the plum dress by Coco Wawa Crafts, by the way. Um, so yes, this is just really, it's feeling really empowering <laughs> in that I can make these stuff, these things myself instead of buying them. But, okay, back to my plans. So I look around and I still see a lot of yarns. And I do have some really, really nice ideas planned for them. Uh, and by really, really nice ideas, I mean simple ideas in which I can use a lot of yarn. Um, and not overthinking it. Uh, so... I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. Uh, there are lots of exciting things coming um, in the second half of this year. So really, oh, I'm so excited about them. So stay tuned. And if you want to uh, be the first to know what's up, um, follow me on Patreon, subscribe to my newsletter. Um, and I will put the links down below as well. I also have a Dutch newsletter now if you don't really like reading English newsletters. So, um, but I sent them out less often. So I will put the links down below in the video description. And yeah, I'm just, I can't wait for you to see. So uh thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it um do let me know if you're also joining the year of using what i have and maybe you'd like to share some of your experience in the comments um yeah thank you so much and i'll see you next time Bye bye